So just how bad is corruption here in Cincinnati? And are more council members going to be arrested? A lot of people wondering this. <sighs> so sad. What are developers thinking right now, including the FBI star witness, yeah. Chinadum and David Winter went searching for answers. He is live at City Hall. David. Well, Paula, a lot of questions after three sitting city council members are indicted, arrested, charged. It's not good. It doesn't look good. But when you compare Cincinnati to other cities, not quite as bad as you might think. Is this an indication of a deeper problem? I think it is. Uh, as Mr. DeVilla says, they're drinking from the same cup, this, this culture of corruption. At today's press conference, the FBI said while the three city council members arrested on charges related to selling their votes are independent of one another, collectively they show a pattern. You have to be pinching yourself and wondering when you're going to wake up from the nightmare. We spoke with UC political science professor Brian Calfano regarding what this says about Cincinnati. Is this the reputation that you want your city to have? you got to grease some palms to get things done. So just how bad are we? The University of Chicago has a list of what it considers the most corrupt cities in the country, measured by corruption convictions. Chicago, L.A., Manhattan, Miami, and Washington, D.C. have had hundreds of convictions in the last 40 years. Newark, Philadelphia, Richmond, Virginia, Cleveland, and Brooklyn have as well, with dozens of indictments at a time of people deep in the bowels of the government. Day in and day out, civil servants found to be in departments where there are corrupt things going on. That's a sign that there's a, a lot deeper level of corrosion of, of public trust and doing good governance type of activities. That's the good news. The bad news is there's a sense that you have to pay to play if you want to be a developer in Cincinnati, like former Bengal Chinita in Duque, who owns Kingsley and & Company and is the FBI's cooperating witness in the Pastor and Sittenfeld cases. We wanted to know how he's doing. Why did he come forward? How common are these shakedowns? When will he speak to the media? His PR firm answered saying Mr. and Duque will not be speaking and he supports comments made by the FBI. We tried several other developers like the Avondale Development Corporation, which has Sittenfeld on its website but we did not hear back. So how do you restore the public trust? What we're doing, um, you know, sending people to prison, you know, that, that's the deterrent that, that does it. And incidentally, we did just hear back from Avondale Development. They emailed me saying, well, they do still have faith in City Hall. They have removed PG Sittenfeld from their website. Paula? Wow, and David, I do appreciate you doing that uh, work to show where we stack up to other cities, but sad that's where we have to set the bar. While U.S. Attorney DeVillers did say there will be no more indictments related to the Nduque development deal, he did say his team is still working to root out corruption where they find it. Stay with Local 12 News for continuing coverage of developments in this case, and you can read the indictment against P.G. Sittenfeld on Local12.com.